Hello world and BSM fans, welcome back to Band on Band. It's that time of the week again. It always comes round really quick, especially in 2020 when your ideas of what a week is are rapidly dissolving into just trying to remember what day it is. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You can listen to this podcast any day of the week, any time of the day. Anyway, on today's episode, we have Katie Malko, recording artist, friend to all, and PR whiz. We're going to sit down and have a conversation about Pedro the Lion. Fans of the show will know that Pedro the Lion has been featured once before by another good friend of BSM, recording artist, great guy, Brooklyn's only son, Kevin Devine. So let's hear if the two of them have any differencing of opinions. Anyway, that's enough chatter. Uh, here's some more chatter. Hello, Katie. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm okay. I like it. We've, we've done the preamble. Now we're doing the fake intro. I love it. <laughs> I need a pop shield like you've got, and I don't know where mine is, so I hope my audio that, isn't very poppy. That's okay, because we're going to talk about Pedro the Lion, exactly. which is a very poppy... Uh, band name second time someone has chose pedro the lion on uh oh really who band else band chose podcast. it um my good friend and bsm legend kevin divine picked pedro the of lion, course uh, back he in, did back in february um luckily enough i can't really remember everything he said because it was so long ago and it feels like a lifetime ago now that we were sitting in a venue chatting mm-hmm. about music and this is the new norm over zoom so You've got full reign to tell me all the things that he told me. Great. <laughs> He'll know more than me about it, that's for sure. Hope. Well, you'll have a different insight, and that's what I like. Um, when was the first time you heard Pedro the Lion? How did that make you feel? How old were you? What was it like? Paint the picture for me. Wow. Um, the first... Well, I heard David Bazan before I heard Pedro the Lion, which is probably the wrong way around, but I kind of went back... Um, sure. And, and no, in fact, the first song I ever heard was the headphones. Um, I never wanted you, um, and I thought it was amazing. And yeah, I'd heard David Bazan, and it was all um, uh, curse your branch. No, not curse your branches. Um, cold beer and cigarettes um, yeah. was the song that I'd heard first, and I thought it was amazing. And then, um, and then somebody loaned me their iPod. And a yeah. magazine came up on shuffle, um, and I was like, "Oh, this is really good. I've really recognised this person's voice. Who is this?" Couldn't figure out. I couldn't place it, but I'd heard. So I basically heard all these three projects, you know, without mm. making any link. And then one day I made the link and went mental, delving into his entire back catalogue in all his bands ever. <laughs> Yeah, if there's one thing that uh, he's got, it's uh, an ample of songs and various back catalogue uh, dives that you can go in. I think yeah. I was in the same sort of camp as you, um, listening to Control first Yeah, through a couple of friends. I can't really remember how or why I stumbled across Pedro the Lion, but I I noticed that there was that massive gap in between records, but I was just kind of just like enthralled with control and then I remember being a really crap teenager and not wanting to listen to Achilles heel because I didn't like the artwork and uh, the artwork um, is a bit (laughs) chunky if we're being honest it's not a good artwork it's not not the best (laughs) sorry David Um, but yeah I feel like I was sitting on and listening to like Rapture and uh was options no it's not opinions it's options isn't it um yeah. and magazine as well and and having a real nice time with that and then uh, yeah my uh partner at the moment fiona is a massive pedro the lion fan oh, really? so we've been buying all the old records at specialist subject through quarantine it's been nice um and also <laughs> getting them from the bsm web store as well but <laughs> Obviously. we're just buying the whole back catalog and having a good time with it um Aww. when it's the best isn't it i love it when music connects people yeah um it's a so you, often does. Yeah, it's it's a good time. Um, you're probably in the same camp as me that you've never seen Pedro the Lion. Am I making no, assumptions? No, I have seen them. Oh, uh, I know. Beautiful. I know. I saw them at South by last year play the Polyvinyl Big Scary Monsters Showcase. 
Oh, yes, of course. Of course, the time where Kev went to Austin and we all <laughs> said, have a lovely time, Kev. We'll see you soon. It was really <laughs> very good. <laughs> yeah. But it was late at night and I had jet lag and I was drunk and I'd played my own showcase that day as well. So I'd gone oh mental after I played because I'd been building up to it for so long and I hadn't been drinking for all the days leading up to it because yeah. I had a chest infection that I was on medication for. So then I just went nuts and I remember watching it like a bit swaying around and fucking yeah. knackered. Um, but try and actually there was one point, I mean, it was an amazing set and they played they played the pretty much that new record in full. But um, the, during the slower tunes, I was like starting to fall asleep because uh, <laughs> just because it had been such a long like couple of days and I was like no this can't be happening I'm watching like yeah. my favorite band <laughs> like just fucking wake up somebody get me a Red Bull how was how was that experience by the uh by the jet lag because that would have been around when I mean when they'd come back and Phoenix was announced and everyone was very happy yeah was it it was were you at that level of um intoxicated where it was a spiritual awakening um do you know what i can't remember whether i saw yeah it was amazing and i just love i've seen dave bazan in various forms a few times and i'm always it's always like my favorite show but my favorite mm. show that whole week was that his he did a secret show unplugged acoustic in like a motorcycle motorcycle warehouse it was a little bit out of town and uh we had to scooter out to this place that was in the middle of like an industrial park and there was like 25 people there like all wow. seated and it was like a conversation with him like he just was chatting and he played some Pedro songs that he played like one or two of the new Pedro songs then. And that was a spiritual moment. It was so, so it's good. So kind of, kind of like a, taking it back to the old house shows that he used to do. Yeah, exactly. Cause he, that was how he used to tour, wasn't it mainly? And yeah, I, I've seen him, I've never seen him do a house show. So it was like, kind of like, yeah, akin to him, to having gotten to see him, gotten to see him do one of those i've seen him in mm. venues but yeah it was like that and people were seated on the floor and stuff um and it was around the time his documentary was being sh his documentary was shown at the festival and stuff as well so yeah. i'd seen that and it was just all like coming together like the pedro the lion dave Bazan, the documentary i had all the backstory and then he was doing his like good thing he does when he plays on his own where he just like chats to the audience says loads of really like he says loads of things that you just go away thinking about for days mm. afterwards like a fucking philosopher or something <laughs> so it was like a David Bazan filled week and I wouldn't change that <laughs> yeah how did you find uh the difference in the difference in both like full band show and acoustic show they are really different because yeah i think with the full band show it was like midnight when they played um and it was a bit of a weird mix mixture of people there's like people like me who are massive fans are just like locked in and then there's mm. like people drunk at the bar you know um <laughs> so they didn't he doesn't really do as much chat he just they just kind of played and yeah played a lot of the new stuff and i love that album so i was happy to hear that new stuff there was probably a couple mm. of people there that were like play the hits but they didn't play anything really from the first albums uh, so yeah it was it's completely different to just seeing him acoustic i'd say um on his own because mm. he just he does such a lot of chat when he's on his own and a lot of, yeah. it gives a lot of context to the songs whereas you know it's, it's always going to be different when it's like a band thing i think yeah, I watched the uh, documentary um, when I was on tour in, God, whenever it came out last year, 2019. And uh, it's such a good documentary. I remember oh, re-watching it again because it was like 99p on iTunes. And I was just like, I'll watch that again. It's so good. There's that scene where he's in the car and it's caught him in the windshield mirror and he's like trying to not cry. I fucking bawled my eyes out of that scene. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed the... Uh, because he he has got this reputation i mean through doing it of being like a bit of a nomadic musician yeah where he just 
drives himself and it's obviously in the opening lines of the first song of Phoenix where he's just talking about the motorways and the highways that he drives up and down and it seems like really almost like narcissistic to just continuously drive yourself around the US to play house shows to maybe 20 and 30 people whilst contemplating your existential crisis with God <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's wild isn't it when you think of, when you put it like that <laughs> yeah that's what I took away from the, that's what I took away from it and then I was like yeah you probably are like driving down the motorway listening to talk radio about evangelical Christians ruining America and going fuck it's something that's probably hard for us to even understand fully because we just don't have those long ass drives here yeah there's no no time to think about things when you're driving in the uk because you'll be there in two hours yeah (laughs) i just hop on a two-hour drive and think about my life and god and (laughs) the universe and see see how that goes yeah oh i'm there (laughs) i didn't really even get into it (laughs) Hi, yep, it's me. Uh, I know you're listening to me uh, talking to Katie about Pedro the Lion. Uh, Sorry about that. Sorry to interrupt. Just going to throw a quick ad in there because we all listen to podcasts for the advertisements, don't we? So the ad today, uh, Katie, who is on the podcast with us, has released an album. It's called Failures. It's out on 6131. Um, It's very good. Um, I'd be surprised if you can find any vinyl copies out there. They they sold very quickly. Still got some CDs. You can obviously always download it, listen to it on iTunes and Spotify. The classics, you know, digital is always there. Don't worry about it. But I understand a lot of us like records. Anyway, so yeah, it's very good. Um, I'm a big fan of the songs Fractures and I actually have been enjoying Let's Go to War, been really enjoying the drum sound on that. Very nice, very live, very good. Um, Yeah, so that is uh, Failures by Katie Malko. It's very good. Um, She'll probably hate it that I've given her album a plug, but it's very good. Katie, you're a modest person. It's a very good album. Uh, Listeners, please go and buy it. And then maybe one day we can all drink a beer or a soft drink, if that's your thing, and uh, watch her play some songs live. Who knows? Crazy world we live in. Anyway, let's, uh, let's go back to the old... Let's go back to the podcast there. Okay. Um, take me back to when you first heard uh, Phoenix for the first time because I remember that time very well and I had a lovely time doing it yeah I remember I wrote on Facebook I wrote on Facebook being like I can't wait a second longer to hear this fucking album and then Dave very <laughs> very kindly sent me it <laughs> like only a couple of days before it was out but it was like getting to the point where I was just like will, will someone just let me hear this album um leak it on limeware come on yeah anything (laughs) christ um yeah and so i heard it as soon as i said i listened to it as soon as you sent me it and i just thought it Mm -hmm. was great i loved it i love model homes i love circle k i love it i just think it's just he's just a really good songwriter that's it yeah i've been um really enjoying because i go when i first listened to it i was just like yellow bike fucking rocks piano beach rocks yeah powerful taboo quietest friend give me the hits um (laughs) but i've been really i've i think the more and more i mean it's like a good album the more and more you come back to it you sort of re-digest different parts of it and you hear new little lines of lyrics um and i found that with like black canyon that i kept listening to that over and over again and then that how it goes into my phoenix was just like i was listening it i was listening today on a run and i was just like (laughs) <laughs> Hit me, David. Hit me. <laughs> it's a really good record, and like obviously, there was a lot of pressure, and like there must have been it must have been mental to for them to be putting considering to put this out after all these years, and the expectation yeah. around it would have been enormous. But I mean, you could, they couldn't have done it done it better. And it's weird because it sounds like Pedro the Lion. It doesn't sound. Do you know what I mean? I think because David Bazan's solo mm. stuff, it, can, it moves between a few different sounds, whereas this is just undoubtedly a Pedro the Lion record, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's been, what, Achilles Heel came out in 2004. 
So this is, what, what's that, 13 like, years? I can't do maths, but it's a very long time. 15, 15 years in between. Mm. That's long, that's isn't a, it? That's a long ass time to, to wait to... I mean, obviously in the, in the documentary as well, at the end where he's on stage in Seattle um, and it doesn't sound like he's been or the band have been away for that amount of time. Right, yeah, yeah, definitely. I didn't realise as well, like the stuff I learned from that documentary that I had no idea about. I mean, why would I have any idea about it if no one t- said it? But um, where he's at the like, is it even a, is it a Christian festival and he's drinking really heavily out of like a fucking mm. canister thing. Yeah. Um, it's just spending the whole time drunk really. And how they, how I didn't even think, I don't think I realized that they came up as a Christian band, that that's how they came mm. up through the, um, you know, how they got big. I, I didn't mm. know that. I, Cause over here, I mean, that stuff is so different here, isn't it? And bands make it yes. over here after that stuff. Like, I guess. If you think if you think of any of like Christian rock bands, you you just descend into a MySpace pit hole, and you're like, yeah. oh yeah, Chodos, oh yeah, The Devil Wears Prada, yeah. oh yeah, Pedro the Lion, yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, so many um, of them yeah. are when and, and and I think that so many people in the UK wouldn't be aware of it, like so many heavier bands, especially. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, as as an artist yourself, then you've just released an album. Congrats. Well, not just, but you know, Thank recently. You. In modern times, that's, you know, just now. In a matter um, of weeks. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's, what uh, inspires you about uh, the songwriting and, and Pedro the Lion in general? What is it that you take away into your own creations? I think I'm hugely influenced by Dave Bazan, to be honest, like as a songwriter. Um, I think lyrically he manages, I don't manage this, but he manages these vignettes that are like extremely, that's the second time I've said vignette this week and I've never, not said it for like a year before that. Um, <laughs> but he manages to like talk, uh, per, uh, he, he gets it right. He gets the balance of it being really personal and yet not so personal that it's, I mean, it, it is personal, but he just, he just does it well. It's hard to explain. I think that it can be such a fine balance when you're talking about things like your own experiences and you don't want to come across as woe is me and, oh, I've got all these issues, you know, and that's, he never does. It's just more mm. of like a, a dis- he just describes things in a way that I'd, I, I just think this is really genius. And I think yeah. how he, how his songs move, like... It's like he'll have songs that are just first chorus, first chorus, but some some just a constant refrain. Like it's not refrain, like constantly feeling like they're building to something. Like mm. uh, he's constantly going into. Like, it's almost like a constant pre-chorus, and it's it just yeah. really like leaves you wanting more. And then you, all that happens is you just listen to the song like a hundred more times. Yeah, <laughs> he's just a I sick feel that's, songwriter. That's... I think that's what I've done with uh, Black Canyon recently. It just feel it. It starts and it ends, and you're like, did did a chorus come, or was it just one big verse that felt like a chorus and never never crescendo because it was always going. Yeah, and then you just circle back and you're like, I need to keep listening to this. Need to figure this out, and you never do because you're not as good a songwriter as David is, (laughs) and that's fine. (laughs) I meant it as in joke. I'm joking. I fully accept that. Look, Katie, when it's you and Pedro, you know where I'm going. You know who I'm picking. I know who I'm picking. <laughs> Me. No, well, that's a joke. Yeah. you got you got to pick yourself. you got to no, shout out yourself. No, that was absolutely a joke, please. <laughs> Honestly, it was a joke. Um, if you could pick a favourite song of Phoenix, um, do you reckon it changes or do you have a top? I do have... It's those two that I mentioned earlier and it switches depending on my mood. So... Model Homes, and I know it was a single, but it's an amazing. Like I know that's that's a dumb thing to be like, oh, you can't choose a single, but it is such a good tune, and it has that refrain thing that I'm talking about. It has a bit of like a push and pull that he just manages to get. Just I mean, they managed to get so right. Like, um, it's this thing he does, and it's sort of like 
it goes into a chord and like the it, the bass note stays the same and he's like there for ages and it's building to something and he does that on a couple of songs um i love that tune and yeah circle k is the other one for a, a sleepier mood i think for a more reflective mood a more melancholic mood yeah <laughs> I love well, that great. line well, as well. That model home's like do 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 do. That after never not living with. That's what I'm talking about. He stays on that yeah. bass like note for ages, and that's that's the that's the chorus. But it's yeah. leading into something that never really happens. But it's sort of you don't want it to happen. He ne- he never seems like too far out of his uh, out of his vocal range as well. You can hear like there's a couple of times where he's like pushing or he's in the highest parts of his range, but it never seems like out of place based on his voice is incredible, the, like the guitar lines as well. Totally, his voice is like oh, it's got one of them voices that just I, I love Bruce Springsteen, and um, I think I just have a thing for like I think it's like a proper fetish for that kind of husky <laughs> older man voice. I think I just go wild for it. That's a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but when he does it when he does go into the rafters with his, for his range it, it's full of emotion because he doesn't mm. overdo it so yeah. like when he goes where will the wait be over you're like yeah. oh give me it David <laughs> sore does he does he go into that sort of uh, range solo as well as because obviously when you're playing in a band you feel like you can hide a little bit you can hide your imperfections around you know around the amplification but when you're when you're just acoustically in a warehouse or in someone's in someone's gaff Mm. does he yeah as someone who's experienced it does he is he is he hitting those ranges live massively he's got actually incredible range like if you listen so cold beer and cigarettes is a really good example of his range because if i play that song I, I have to move it be, like when to myself if I'm trying to like just sing it to myself mm. he goes like he goes like an octave higher so he's starting yeah I mean his range is pretty incredible actually but he always starts lower than I can ma- manage and then it goes into a range that I'm comfortable with but if I was to mm. move it up then that range would be too fucking high for me does that make sense <laughs> I can't yeah, I yeah. can't cover with David Bazan for this reason much to everyone's oh. disappointment, I'm sure. <laughs> Twitter's not happy. No, I'm sure everyone's really sad about the fact that I can't ruin David Bazan's songs. <laughs> well, thanks very much for coming on and talking about That's your friend fine. David and how good Pedro the Lion are. These, these conversations usually are just two nerds chatting about how great a BSM band are. Who are you calling a nerd? <laughs> me? I'm fine with that. No. Okay, I'll call no, you a, a fetish joking. fan. No, I'd rather be a nerd than a fetish <laughs> fetish. Up. Okay, I thought I'd go with the easier one of the two. <laughs> um, great. Thanks very much for being on. Thank you um, for having me. It was nice. We'll, I feel like I'm we'll going to go and emails. listen. Yeah, we will. All right, mate. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So there we have it. Another episode done. We are clawing closer and closer to the end of the year. Who knows if we'll keep this up in 2021. We'll probably run out of... No, that's that's a lie. We're not going to run out of people to talk to. Anyway, thank you very much to Katie for carving out a bit of her time to chat to me. Uh, We chat on the internet via email. So it was nice to chat to you via Zoom rather than email. Band on Band was hosted by me, Connor Laws, obviously, I'm the one talking, and edited by my good friend and fan of the colour orange, Oscar Lydiard. That's that, no housekeeping, Uh, still some strange times we live in, please make sure to call your mother, drink water, wash your hands i mean you should be doing these things normally every single day and not during a pandemic but you know we all live and we all learn so let's just uh keep keeping on um talk to me on the internet if you really want don't have to if you don't want to and uh if you could 
drop us a review. Yeah, that's the first time that's coming. Drop us a review. Kind of helps. Um, also, uh, it doesn't really matter if you don't. It would just be nice to hear if anyone actually listens or likes this. So, anyway, that's all from me. Talk to you soon.